Hey everybody, Simon here. Here we are again. Love on the wreck. Love on the wrecks. <laughs> Love on the rocks. Episode four, five. I'm losing them. Losing track of numbers. Jean has just arrived up in Bangkok. I've changed hammock today because of this storm. Give you a bit of uh, insight to what happens in Thailand when it rains. Here, you might get a bit of thunder and lightning. Dramatic backdrop. Jean gets up to Bangkok. He's uh, got the Hotel Marriott limo, which heads him off to uh, takes him off to the hotel, and he gets there, checks in, got himself a nice suite, but he's only booked himself in. Obviously, he's still yet to go that next step. Um, with uh, Willie on this uh, Bangkok trip, time will tell. He gets there, unpacks as all the usual. Seven p.m. He's dressed up, casual shirt, collar, slacks, down to the lobby, and uh, O turns up in a, a one-piece trouser suit, very, very nice, looking stunning, his eyes pop out of his head, she's that stunning, looking gorgeous, she's got him hooked, anyway pleasantries, hello, kiss on the cheek, he can't take his eyes off her, Where should we go for a meal? What do you fancy? And the usual thing, it's like, it's up to you. What do you want? Maybe let's go, uh, you mentioned hotel by the river, but you're here. Let's go away from this area, says O. Maybe down by the river, there's quite a few nice hotels and restaurants down there. Um, okay. As a word with the concierge, wants to use their car rather than the taxi. So, gets the limo organised, has a quick look at the maps and things with the concierge and there's a few restaurants he wants to try I believe Jim Thompson's so he's going to head that way and try that so he's jumping in the limo very nice Mercedes off they go restaurant lovely meal after meal a bit of a walk down to the river romantic little walk along chatting and O's asking Gene all about his life and why he's is he married why is he not married what's happened what's happened to previous she starts pushing him and quizzing him and he's open and he says he had a girlfriend before in Thailand but found out she was cheating on him and he was quite upset and then he met O he's heading back home to the States um, in about nine days and just wants to relax this holiday um, didn't plan on meeting anybody else anyway they walk along they find this uh, bit of a bar bistro along by the river and they go and have a drink or two they have a really good evening O says to uh, Jean that um, She'd rather stay around Bangkok uh, for the next few weeks than go back to Phuket. She's got more business in Bangkok, knowing that maybe she'll bump into Dave if she goes to Phuket. But Sir Jean says he doesn't mind Bangkok, but he really wants to be in Phuket because it's a different climate, more relaxing. Bangkok's hustle and bustle and says to her, well how about, can you take some time off with your bits and pieces? Can we take this to the next level? Come and stay with me at the hotel. Um, and we'll, we'll stay around the hotel and get to know each other and uh, you know, just go out for evening meals. O says to him, uh, let me have a think about it and see what my business plans are. You've got nine days left. 
I'll check my diary, my work schedule, and we'll talk tomorrow. Jean's fine with that, and he says it's the end of the night. She says to him, I actually live on the opposite side of Bangkok to where you're staying. It's easier if I get a taxi from here home, uh, rather than going back to your hotel and then home. So, how about we do lunch tomorrow? And he's fine, brilliant, okay, we'll do lunch. So we meet somewhere, and she's, yeah, Siam Square, um, outside Siam Paragon, where the aquarium is, and there's a nice quadrangle. Let's meet there, for, say, midday. And you can always ring me if you can't find, if we can't find each other. Okay, he says. So, gives her a kiss on the cheek, she heads off in the taxi. He gets the taxi back to his hotel. And, uh, all good, all good. Back in Phuket, Dave, furious that he almost got in a position where he could resolve the loss of money and everything that happened to him with, a, with that bit of a dodgy marriage. It's up to him to prove with lawyers and interpreter that he has been taken for a ride. He has to prove that it's not just a boyfriend, girlfriend, potentially, possibly got married in a village, real or not, and fallen out of love. If he can't prove that, then it could just be that, that he's thrown a load of money at a girl, hasn't worked out, and she's sent him packing. Has she broken any laws doing that? Not if it wasn't intentional, but we know it was intentional. He believes it was intentional and he now has to prove one way or another and then get hold of her again and get her in front of the police or even the court he's got meetings with the lawyer and the interpreter two days time we'll come back to him in a bit back to oh, Bangkok Jean next day lunch they meet up just go to a inner uh, the Siam Paragon the shopping centre the mall there's plenty of restaurants and cafes they just go in a pizza place or something and grab a snack and O's looked at the odds she knows it's safer for her to stay away from Phuket just in case she bumps into Dave if she gambles and goes to Phuket and somehow he collars her if Jean sees any of it it'll end badly for O in both circumstances so it's in her best interest not to go to Phuket she says to Jean due to the little bits of business I do and what I've got coming up in the next month I really need to stay in Bangkok I can't um, get down to Phuket I can't do it she says but this isn't a problem you can go back to Phuket um, and have it enjoy the rest of your holiday of course he's like ah that's not what I expected he thought she would just jump at it chance and go to the next level, jump on a plane with him and off he goes. Bit of a shock, but that's also a bigger hook. He can't have what he wants. They have a lunch and they, let's go and do some shopping, he says. And they go around and Siam Square, all around there is five star shopping. All the designer shops, the handbag shops, the clothes, it's all there, the jewellers. And Jean, thinking he can still buy her and catch her and hook her to do what he wants and go to Phuket. He's a money man, he's got lots of money. He thinks, right, let's see if I can entice her with a really nice present. And I mean, what's a really nice present? Maybe some nice designer sunglasses? A reasonably cheap designer bag? No. Oh no. 
straight to a jeweler's. They've only known each other, what, a few days? She's played it brilliant. Straight to a jeweler's, in Siam, Paragon. In they walk, and he says, I notice you, you have a watch, you wear a lady's watch, but it's not of a brand I recognise. That's a good way of putting it. And she says, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a nice watch, but I've had it a long time. It's, it's not a main brand. And he said, if you could have any watch and call her darling, could you have, if you could have any watch, darling, what watch would you buy? Now, O's not that. She's probably got some watches at home. She knows straight away she's calculating resale value or status value. An original watch, ladies. It's got to be top of the range. It's got to be Cartier. It's got to be Rolex. It's got to be Gucci. And she says those three names. She said, if money was no object, I'd have one of those. However, I wouldn't want it to be to flash. Again, knowing a lot of ladies don't like the glitzy solid gold Rolex with all the diamonds. They'd rather have a slightly understated watch. Cartier. And he says, let's have a look at some. And he calls the, they're in a main dealer. They've got everything in this shop. Calls over the girl. Very nice girl, speaks English. Show us blah, 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 up we go. And she brings out. And, oh, immediately pointing at the Cartiers. Now look what I, that is, those are beautiful. They're not too flash. And there's no prices on these watches, not in this top jewelers. Those look beautiful. Oh no, straight away. Cartier. Beautiful champagne face. Titanium and gold as well. Strap. That's beautiful. And he says, would you like that? She says, it's, I'd love it. She said, it's beautiful. Knowing. He can't see the price, she can't see the price, how she played it right. She says, let me get you that as a present. And the girl, yep, yep, let's size it up on her arm. And while she's sizing it up, he's off to the cashier. Oh, saying to the girl, how much is it? It's 95,000 baht. It's uh, three and a half thousand dollars. Oh, nice. He buys it, he pays for it. It's on her arm. Shall we put your old watch in the box, madam? Yes, thank you. It's paid, bang. Oh, looks across. That's a gold or a platinum American Express card. She spots him paid. She's thinking to herself, right, I'm still not gonna pick it. It's too much of a gamble. Or shall I? Shall I see how much he spends today on me? I put a price on this afternoon, put a price on going to Phuket, taking that gamble, I can avoid Dave, can't I? And she says to him, thank you so much, and gives him a big kiss on the cheek. He says, absolute pleasure. And she says, you don't wear any other jewellery. And she's like, ka-ching. She says, I used to have a gold chain necklace but I actually got robbed. It got pulled off my neck when I was uh, out and about in another country, let's say Malaysia. <laughs> he says, wow. He said, look, they've got some beautiful gold chains here, but they're very yellow. And she then says, oh, let me explain about Thai gold to you. Boom, boom, boom. Straight in, telling him and showing him. It's 23 carat, da, 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 da. and it's on weight and size and thickness. And she said, what type of chain do you like? Now she's not going to say thin, because thin is cheap. She's going to say thick, and then she's going to say a pattern, which is even more. She's got it. She's like, well, I like a flat necklace. 
but where the links are really flat, really hard to make, making the price even higher. There you go, you just about to spend another $2,000 on her, on a gold necklace. He's only been in that shop 30 minutes. He buys it, a couple of thousand bucks, and she says, we've got to come out of here, you've got to stop spending money on me, darling, darling. And he's like, okay. When we were eating, she says, I spilt some food on my, it's dropped on my hip, on the, this outfit I've got on. Do you think I could get maybe a cheap dress or something? Because I don't like looking with a, a food mark on me. Ha <laughs> ha! Clothes. She's now thinking, this guy is so easy. He thinks he can buy me. And I'm going to see how far we can take it. Off to a clothes shop. Dress. And some nice trousers. And a nice blouse. He's loving the shopping. Guys don't love shopping usually. He's loving it. Dave, remember we've got that meeting coming up. He's starting to think about what evidence he's got. And then, the light bulb moment. Go back in your mind to when he was dating O, way back. They've been together for a long time, over a year, dating. Back into his emails. Times he came over with her. He knows, I've got photos. Why didn't I think? But I haven't got the photos in the emails. Where are the photos? They're back home. They're on hard drives, memory cards. I've got no one there I can get access to it. But I've got photos. And then he remembers. I sent her some money a year ago, when we first met. For a phone, I sent it to a bank account. Where's that information? Bank. It's back home. Of course. He rings up his lawyer. Tells the lawyer, look, I have got evidence. I've got photos. I've got bank statement. I sent her money. That's the only things I can think of that can push, prove her face in front of me on a screen, us together. And the lawyer says, we need it. The lawyer then says, look, you've given us a rough idea where this village is and directions. I will get a private investigator, send them, find that village, talk to the locals, see if we can find any of those people that were involved in that wedding. Are you prepared to throw a little bit of money at this in case we can help people remember? And Dave says, what's the chance if we can? And me going home and getting all this uh, evidence. He said, if we can get that evidence, and we can get someone from the village to own up to what's happened, he said, you'll nail her. Whether you'll get money back depends on if she's still got it. And Dave says, I'm going to book a flight home now. I'm going home. You sort all that out. Could be the for O. She's thinking of going back to Phuket. Ah, but Dave's going to leave Phuket. Might time well. I'm getting wet. We'll call it a day. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, I can't believe it's getting cold as well. What's going on? Welcome to Thailand. Bye for now. <laughs>